They're not a person that comes in here that doesn't like trees. I mean, people come in, they love the trees. I've never met anybody who's dumped, they don't like trees. Everybody loves trees. And people, I mean, sometimes you're tempted to hug them yourself, but you don't want to get a reputation like that, you know. <laughs> the first memory of this place was a Saturday morning, and we were asked to take a tree down further up the pond there. And we came in on a sunny day, and we just thought, we never knew the pond. This place here. existed, no? Until we saw it, and they were just blown away with it. You know, I mean, just couldn't believe lived in the area all my life and had never seen anything like this. And the same way we used to, this used to be covered in ducks as well. I was just going to say that, when what? we first come here, you, this area here, you could hardly see water for ducks. Well, we met old Lord Beams, old Lord Beams decided that he, he loved his forestry, he really loved being in the wood, you know. Something, I mean, he loved that much, sometimes we'd big fires going in the wood. We'd leave him at night time and it was the rain. He would just lie down beside the fire, you know. And we'd walk away leaving the rain and say, Lord, you're going to be okay there. I'm fine, this is. You know, be lying in the rain. He decided every day for eight years he'd be with us every single day. They're not a day he didn't. We went to holiday, John. It's not like it was we were going to holiday. Oh, he was. <laughs> he says, I'm sad you're going to holiday. What am I going to do when you're going to holiday? You know, he says. And when we come back, the people in office say, Listen, we're going to ban you for going to holiday because we've had enough of him. <laughs> <laughs> want something to do, you know. But it wasn't like you see it today. I mean, the island there was just like a jungle. You, there was no, no path through it, you know. So in eight years, I uh, worked with him every single day. Open up all these places. Open all the, the dowagers walking at us. I mean, doing that. Aye. Uh, well, Lord Williams, when you when started working with him, he had all the old maps, all the old right of -ways and he used to measure everything accurately because he used to measure it in the old Scotch chain. So the paths would all be met. Right round ho ho walls, sunken walls. So he measured everything to the wall to where the path should be and reinstated everything in its proper place. Oh, this is a great big gospel. These old, old fashioned mature trees are still here, you know. They're taking, they're taking a fair hammer to the wind these days and they've become the end of their life. A lot of the big beaches, big monsters are starting to lose limbs at the top and things like that, you know. And, uh, over the years, uh, they'll have to come down, you know, because you, we have to worry about public safety and things like that, you know. Uh, but it's good to keep them going for uh, bats and things like that in these old trees because you've got a second more tree there, ain't that? Bats can't live in these places, you know. And, uh, so you need these old, old trees to be about, you know. The older we get, we don't want to take big trees down, you know, because you used to think that, that something that takes 200 years to grow, you know. We were sitting in the big stump once we fell a big tree, we were sitting in this started for a wee seed, we had the seed like you'll see, look. What, what's in this wee seed to produce all oh, this? Big cathedral, you know what I mean? So you'll see a lot of trees with big, big here you'll see them with big limbs off them. People say, I have to come, get that down, plant another tree, you'll see. Let that go away like it and let, leave it for another 50 years on the hill. And let the normal bacteria get into it and do its job of, of producing bracket fungus and all these sort of things. You know? so these are the things you have to leave in the wood to keep the biodiversity going and things like that. You know? We look at them every day and every day we will walk the forest the weekend. The weekends will be spent camping in the forest and walking the forest. And it's just it's some lovely material. It's, it's got its own uh, uses. Each tree has got its own uses in, in history for uh, making brakes and things like that, you know, making, uh, uh, if you're using a old wagons, you would use poplar because it would bends more. If you used beech, it would break when you put I mean, So they all have their own characteristics and usage in our society, you know. Yeah. We, we need more of that all over Scotland. We are, we are under-forested, we really need more, you know. And uh, they have to be looked after for, for all these years, 200 years, you know. Every job we get sent today, it's to improve the it's to make an improvement or stop something getting worse. So yo, you have that, you're leaving something for the future. You know what I mean? It's, it is a good feeling. You're doing it and you think, well, yeah, somebody yeah. will appreciate it in years to come who did this. You know what I mean? That's this one there, that's a cedar Lebanon. This one here. Look at the beautiful cones it has on it. Look at cones there. That's a wonderful specimen, look at it. 
You know, that's all wood from a seed. Eh? One seed. What's in that seed that, what do you call it, produces such a plant, eh? Uh, well, it's been a sort of knock-on thing. I'm three years older than Jimmy, so... I says, I'll work on till you're 65, that'll make me 68. I'm 70 at the end of this month, and the two years are still working. <laughs> This is your office. I mean, look at that. How's like an office like this? Look at that. It's wonderful. You know? So how can you not like uh, being in the forest when you're, you're doing this every day? You know? I know this. Really, really like it's like the the the, uh, the the changes of seasons in that day. You know, sometimes you come in here and it's frosty and that's all frozen over, and there's no leaves of this and the sunshine. It's just the most stunning, beautiful place to be. You know. So the forest is a lovely place to work and we've enjoyed it all these years, Jim, is it? It's just, well, uh, it's been everybody great. says to their skin, there's no time you're retired. And you think, nah, you're maybe right. Then maybe you come out here look at this. you think, hmm, no. I don't think so. <laughs> then I think so. <laughs> we have a do retire, we'll still come round and we'll walk these places we planted to see these young trees. Are still growing, and we'll probably take them and things like you know. Just because you planted them, it's a legacy you're leaving. Just doing again at the ice house. We had to fell a big beech tree, and right behind it, well, normally you just when you swipe through with a long blade on the saw, it just cuts everything. Again, if you're anything growing behind small, cuts everything. But here was a, it was just a beech sapling like that. I thought seed that came out of the same tree that's fell and took away. Go and stand on that, I'm not going to cut that. We felled the big tree and it's just in recent times you go in and you think, oh Jesus, look at the size of that thing and we, see, we saved it. But the size it's grown to and then you realise just how long you've been there for a tree to get to that but size. That may, that may be 15 years ago, it's only about that size, isn't it? Yeah, aye. That was 15 years ago, you know. A farmer plants yeah, a crop and he gets <laughs> he a farmer plants his crop and he gets his, his, his barley that year. You know what I mean we we say well we put this in here for the next two hundred years or fifty years. <laughs> so you look long term and it's, it's, uh, and that's with trees you have to look long term. You know next two hundred years there it is. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs>